Good morning, Spreckle Scholars. Hoping to spread a little sustastical cheer today. Your day may seem glum, you're tired and grumpy, your hair is all wacky and your breath smells real funky. But to brighten your day, I'm here to yell, hey! If Dr. Seuss had a say, you wouldn't feel that way. So beginning this morning and for the rest of this week, I'll be reminding you of some great words that Dr. Seuss would speak. So pay close attention, open your ears really wide. I want you to try some Dr. Seuss advice for size. Listen to these Seuss-tastic quotes guaranteed to lift your spirits. Now quiet your voices, everyone, so everyone can hear it. The first awesome quote I want to tell you about is when Dr. Seuss said, why fit in when you were born to stand out? Another great one to share is one you may recall Horton said, a person's a person, no matter how small. The last Dr. Seuss quote I'm going to leave you with today is something you should think about all throughout the day. Dr. Seuss said, oh, the places you'll go. Today is your day. Your mountain is waiting, so get on your way. I hope these words of advice will guide you, so please don't delay. Now is the best time to start having a Seuss-tastic day. In Massachusetts, March 1904, we met someone like we've never seen before. You may know him as Geisel or Theodore or Ted, or maybe you call him Doctor instead. Whatever name you choose, I'm happy to say a literary legacy was born on that day. If you haven't figured it out yet, silly goose, I'm actually talking about Dr. Seuss. Through his artful words with stanzas and rhyme, he made lovely characters with lessons for a lifetime. Thanks for your help teaching children to read. Happy birthday, Dr. Seuss. We'll never forget you. Godspeed. Kellyanne. 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 I yeah. thought you were making a video. Oh, that's right. It's Read Across America Week. I wanted to share this poem with the kids at school. It's called I Opened a Book by Julia Donaldson. I opened a book and in I strawed. Now nobody can find me. I've left my chair, my house, my road, my town, my world behind me. I'm wearing the cloak. I've slipped on the ring. I've swallowed the magic potion. I've fought with a dragon and dined with a king and dived in a bottomless ocean. I opened a book and made some friends. I shared their tears and laughter and followed their road and its bumps and bends to their happily ever after. I finished my book and out I came. The cloak can no longer hide me. My chair and my house are just the same, but I have a book inside me. In, in my classroom, the kids like to say, hashtag read 30 minutes every day. Bury yourself in a book and have a good time this week. When you think things are bad, when you feel sour and blue, when you start to get mad, you should do what I do. Just tell yourself, Ducky, you're really quite lucky. Some people are much more, oh, ever so much more, oh, muchly, much, much more unlucky than you. Happy birthday, Dr. Seuss. Hey, Sparkle Scholars, Mrs. O'Connell here, and in honor of Read Across America Week, I wanted to share with you one of my favorite poems from when I was little. So I got this book back when I was in elementary school, and my favorite poem is in this book, and I would just read it over and over and over again, and it's all about books. So here it is, and it says, Books to the ceiling, books to the sky, my pile of books are a mile high. How I love them, how I need them, I'll have a long beard by the time I read them. <laughs> so I hope you enjoyed that, and don't forget to read every day. <laughs> Let us all sing, it's good for almost anything. It's good for dusty, musty throats To let out gusty, lusty notes 
it's good for people, frogs and goats, to open up and sing. It's good for tongues and necks and knees of people, bees and chimpanzees. So if by chance you're one of these, open up, open up and sing, sing, sing. It's good for almost Hi, Spreckles Scholars. Happy Dr. Seuss Week and happy birthday, Theodore Gazelle. As many of us know, Dr. Seuss. Now, Dr. Seuss has so many books and so many quotes that are great, that tell us to read and to soar and to do all that we want to do. Now, this is a great one to remember, too. So listen closely. You have brains in your head. You have feet in your shoes. You can steer yourself any direction you choose. So remember, Spreckle Scholars, whatever you want to do, you can do it. We know as teachers and staff that we are always proud of you. And whatever you choose to do, you can do it. And we are there to help you. Have a great day and happy Dr. Seuss week. Hello, Spreckle Scholars. We wanted to celebrate with you Dr. Seuss turning 117 years old. And in that celebration, we would like you to do a birthday chant with us. So when I say happy, you're going to say? Birthday. Happy? Birthday. Happy? Birthday. You'll clap your hands and stomp your feet. And then when I count one, two, Three. On three, we're going to shout out, Happy Birthday, Dr. Seuss! All right, so here we go. You ready? When I say happy, you say? Birthday. Happy. Birthday. Happy. Birthday. Clap your hands. Stomp your feet. One, two, three. Happy, happy birthday, birthday, Dr. Dr. Seuss! Happy birthday, Dr. Seuss! Good morning, scholars. Miss Alicia here. And because it is Dr. Seuss's birthday and a whole week of celebrating reading with Read Across America, I thought that I would share some fun facts with you about Dr. Seuss. I know that every week you get asked the question by your parents, what did you learn in school today? And I know that when I was a kid, sometimes I would have a hard time just thinking about it right away, like, hmm, even though I learned a lot. So I thought, why don't I share some really fun facts with you about Dr. Seuss? And then tonight at the dinner table with your family, you can impress them with your knowledge. All right, so let's get down to business. Dr. Seuss was actually never a doctor. <laughs> that was just his pen name. And he had the pen name Dr. Seuss, but his real name was Theodore Geisel. So tonight at dinner, you might want to tell your mom and dad, do you know Dr. Seuss's, what Dr. Seuss's real name was? And they'll be like, they're probably going to be like, no. And you're going to say Theodore Geisel. It'll be super impressive. So Dr. Seuss, he was never a doctor. His name wasn't Dr. Seuss. And even though he wrote many, 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 many children's books, he never had children. So that's pretty interesting. That would be a fun fact to share. I bet you've heard the book, Sam I Am. If you can't remember, I'll give you a line and I bet you've heard it. I do not like green eggs and ham. I do not like them, Sam I Am. But did you know that that book was written just because of a bet? Yes, Dr. Seuss's publisher bet Dr. Seuss that he could not write a book only using 50 words. 
And he was like, yes, I can. And he did. Pretty cool. My favorite fact about Dr. Seuss is that his very, very first book that he wrote, I saw it on Mulberry Street, that he was rejected, turned down 27 times by different publishers. So Dr. Seuss, over 27 times, was told his book wasn't good enough. It wasn't good enough to become a book, but he did not give up. He had belief in himself and he kept going and going and going. And could you imagine if after the first couple of times, Dr. Seuss just said, nobody likes this. I'm a terrible writer. I'm not gonna write anymore. We wouldn't have so much of his wonderful books full of whimsy. So um, I want you to think about that in your life and just because you're not getting something yet doesn't mean that it won't happen for you and to never give up because only you can be you and i'm going to leave you with a little quote the more you read the more things you will know the more that you learn the more places you'll go all right scholars have a beautiful day and happy Happy birthday, Dr. Seuss. Keep on reading. Hi, boys and girls. Asul and I are going to read to you some Seussisms. The first one is be true to yourself. You have brains in your head. You have feet in your shoes. You can steer yourself any direction you choose. You're on your own and you know what you know and you are the guy who will decide where you go. That's a good one. The next one is think before you speak. That's a hard one. My father warned me, don't babble, don't bray. You never can tell who might hear what you say. My father warned me, boy, button your lip. I guess I should have. I made a bad slip. And then there's another one that says, expect the unexpected. We know about that. I heard a strange peep and I took a quick look. And you know what I saw with the look that I took? A bird laid an egg on my arithmetic book. And the last one is the best because it's called see the light at the end of the tunnel. Then just when I thought I could stand it no more, by chance I discovered a tiny trap door. I popped my head out. The great sky was sky blue. I knew from the flowers I'd finally come through to the banks of the beautiful river Wahoo. So that's a good one. Soon we'll be back in school. See ya. Here's my favorite Dr. Seuss quote. It goes like this. Today you are you that is truer than true. There is no one alive who is youer than you, Dr. Seuss. Keep being awesome, Spreckles Pirates. Hello scholars and welcome to Read Across America Week. I am super excited about this week because reading is one of my favorite pastimes. And I would like to share a quote with you by Mason Cooley. Reading gives us some place to go when we have to stay where we are. I would also like to share a poem by Julia Donaldson called, I Opened a Book. I opened a book and in I strode. Now nobody can find me. I've left my chair, my house, my road, my town and my world behind me. I'm wearing the cloak, I slipped on the ring. I swallowed the magic potion. I fought with a dragon, dined with a king and dived into a bottomless ocean. I opened a book and made some friends. I shared their tears and laughter and followed their road with its bumps and bends to the happily ever after. I finished my book and out I came 
The cloak can no longer hide me. My chair and my house are just the same, but I have a book inside me. Happy reading. Hey, I'm really excited to talk about Dr. Seuss. One of my favorite things about his stories is how they rhyme. And uh, as you know, rhyming is when the words sound the same, when they end the same, they sound the same. We're all familiar with these basic cat, hat, sat, bat, rat, very straightforward rhyming. They're also spelled the same. That's not always the case. Sometimes we have words that sound the same but are spelled quite differently. For example, kite, might. I might go fly a kite. And then, oh wow, three different ways to spell the same sound. New, true, zoo. It's true, the zoo is new. So just a little background about rhyming. And um, you know, sometimes it's a challenge to rhyme with words that are real. So Dr. Seuss went ahead and made up some pretend words that rhymed, which I think is fun to do. I'll read you a few pages from a great story called There's a Walk It in My Pocket by Dr. Seuss. I'm just gonna go jump right in. I like the zable on the table and the chair under the chair. But that bofa on the sofa, well, I wish he wasn't there. All those nebbards in the cupboards, they're good fun to have about. But that noothgrush on my toothbrush, him I could do without. Noothgrush, toothbrush. The only one I'm really scared of is that vug under the rug. And that Quimney up the chimney, I don't like him, not at all. And it makes me sort of nervous when the Zal scoots down the hall. It's really fun to rhyme with a Z word. But the yeps on the steps, they're great fun to have around. And so are many, many other friends that I have found. Now here comes a long list of rhymes that rhyme with the word cellar. A cellar is like a basement. Here we go. Like the teller and the neller and the geller and the deller and the beller and the weller and the zeller in the cellar. Now this brings me to a game that you might like to play. When you're trying to go to sleep at night and you want to get all the other thoughts out of your head that are keeping you awake, it's a fun rhyming game that you can play. And you can play it with your name. And it goes like this. Let's say that your name is Wanda, for example. Um, and you can picture in your brain when your eyes are closed, picture all the ABCs on a chart and start with the consonants. So you're going to skip the vowels. You're going to skip A, E, I, O, U, and you will go start with a B. So you take off the W in Wanda and it turns into Bonda. And you go to C, Conda, D, Donda, E, mm -mm, F, Fonda, G, Gonda, H, Honda, all the way to Z. Zonda. Now I have a feeling by the time you get to Z, you'll be fast asleep. All right, so I challenge you to have fun with your name and create funny rhymes with it. And also, no matter what grade you are, no matter what age you are, reading Dr. Seuss stories never get old. They're enjoyable, they're relaxing, and they're fun. So thanks for listening to me. Thank you for your time. Have a beautiful day, everybody. The Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all.